Hi, my name is Gerhard Schwartner and welcome to Selling Power TV. Today, we have the pleasure of meeting with Nick Kane. He's an author, he's an expert in sales, and uh, he is a partner at the Janik Performance Group. Welcome, Nick. Hey, Gerhard. You uh, shared a theory with me um, that I find really fascinating, which is the relationship between the acquisition of a new skill and the improvement in morale and confidence. Uh, uh, tell me more about that. We're in an interesting time, right? Where employee morale in some ways are, are lower than they've been in, in many years. Uh, a lot of personal challenges that people are facing and even uh, business challenges, right? In terms of selling effectively and leading people. Uh, but the one thing that we, we keep coming back to is we see a direct correlation between skill development uh, which equals better performance and ultimately improve morale. If you can enable people to do better, to be more effective at their job, to give them the skills they need and the support they need to be even more effective, those two things very much go hand in hand. What are some of the skills, Nick, that salespeople need to practice more in tough times? Some of the things that we've been focusing on are things like storytelling right, as a way to enhance presentations uh, better use of use cases, uh, more effective use of demos, just trying to bring their products and services to life and really do a good job keeping folks engaged in this virtual environment. Active listening is more important than it's ever been. Improving those skills, you're going to improve morale of the team as well. What are the elements of good storytelling um, and what can people walk away with to use immediately? I think having a strong story to tell requires the right framework and some thought that goes into that story. Uh, typically, you want to start with setting up what that challenge is or what that problem is that you're trying to solve. The better you can do with bringing in a use case or an example of a client that is similar, either in industry or in challenge or size, uh, the more relatable you can make that story, the more effective it typically is. Lay out the, the components in clear steps, right? Um, be able to show some proof points on the results that were obtained uh, and then be able to wrap up that story. The, the one thing I'll add to that though, is in this new virtual environment, I think it's even more important to be timely in that delivery, right? Like we have less time to keep folks engaged. We have less time to keep them in front of us on a call or on, on video. Uh, so just think about the most most effective way to do that in the most concise manner as you're delivering that. What kind of listening skills um, would you recommend? I would guess uh, we need to show a lot more empathy as well. Yeah, I think it's empathy. I think it's you know active listening skills, as we all know, um, critically important to sales in general, but even more so virtually. But I, I would add another skill to that, which is checking in more often. Right. As you're as you're in these virtual conversations, it's important to check in and make sure you're reading uh, that individual or the group that you're working with, uh, you know, effectively and correctly. And there are some specific ways that you can check in consistently without it feeling robotic. It shows the customer that you're listening. You know, it, it recaps information clearly uh, and it starts to create deeper connections with with customers. So can you share an example where listening skills have yielded to a much more productive outcome in a customer conversation? If you are actively listening and you're checking in consistently, you, you're likely picking up on information that you didn't pick up on otherwise. I think if you don't check in and you don't validate, you run the risk of making assumptions, you miss information, and ultimately that could lead to either a you know, deal lost, right, or it could lead to potentially not uh, providing the right solutions to a client, not expanding those offerings, and, and that sort of thing. Um, so there's not, I wouldn't say a particular example that comes to mind, but I think those are some of the pitfalls, right? If you aren't doing right. those things consistently, you just run the risk of not being as effective. What is your recommendation to listen and be available to the customer if they want to share a personal story? Having an open dialogue about that is the right thing to do there. If the client's comfortable moving forward, they're the ones that dictated that. They're the ones that advanced it. I think it's perfectly fine. And I think if they want to discuss it, I would open up that dialogue, allow them an opportunity to share that. That's going to help build a better connection. That's going to help build rapport. That's going to deepen the relationship. And if you think about it, if you didn't give them that opportunity and they were that was on their mind, they're probably not going to be super engaged or very dialed into the conversation anyway. Right. And you run the risk of not having the outcomes you want. So I think, I think you win in both ways, right? In that sense. How do you teach people what you got? I think part of it is, is a mindset thing. You know, I, I don't know if that's just skills. I think that's part of it as well. But I think there's a mindset of growth and there's a mindset of desiring to always get better and learn and being open to ideas. 
But I think leaders work on that all the time. As a leader, you want to move ideas forward. You want to, you know, you want to, things to come to fruition that you thought of and that sort of thing. But I think if you don't take the time to gather feedback and you're not always looking for ways to even improve on things that you may have thought of, you're definitely running big risks of not finding the success that you could, right? So I, to me, that feels like a mindset shift in some in some ways. Right. And I think the skill there is it comes back to listening. It comes back to empathy. It comes back to promoting open dialogue. Uh, and being genuinely um, have a genuine desire to want to learn and gather that information. So what are you saying is if you have a high performance mindset, you have a high performance outcome? Absolutely. Well, for anybody who would like to learn more about Nick's company, go to Janik.com. And uh, we do have a, a survey coming up, right? We do, yeah. Super excited to, to, to share that with, uh, with the audience here coming up soon. Uh, we, we did an amazing survey to sales leaders around this new world of selling virtually and leading virtually. There's some hot uh, information that came out of that, uh, really exciting stuff around what best-in-class organizations are doing, how they're supporting their sellers, how they're supporting their leaders, some really eye-opening stuff. So really excited to get that, uh, that report out to the, to, the, uh, to the public here soon. Thank you, Nick. Thank you as well, Gerhard. Take care.